Sports. We are one sport. We are one sport. Last night, the Orioles broke out the big lumber, blasting five home runs and cruising to a 9 1 victory. Tonight, the Rays send their newly minted ace to the hill as Alex Cobb looks for his eighth consecutive win. Welcome to T-Mobile Tuesday Night Baseball. We welcome you to the monumental city of Baltimore, Maryland. We're at Camden Yards tonight. The Rays and the Orioles meet in game two of this four-game series. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to an evening of Rays baseball with Brian Anderson, Dwayne Stats. Great to have you aboard. Todd Callis along throughout the evening as well. Last night, the Rays ran into this powerful Baltimore Orioles lineup to the tune of five home runs, seeing how and why they lead the major leagues in home runs. Tonight, the Rays will send Alex Cobb to the hill to try to turn that around. What well, you saw had a front row seat for what the Baltimore Oriole lineup is capable of last night with those five home runs. To put that in perspective, the Orioles had seven hitters in double digits in home runs. Their top two, Nelson Cruz, Adam Jones, those are the two guys that didn't homer. So this is a lineup that you've got to be very aggressive with, but you also have to make your pitches because as we saw last night, if you leave pitches out over the plate, this team can hurt you in a big way. That is what this offense has been built on and how, what they have ridden out all season long. It's now going to be up to Alex Cobb to right the ship for the Rays, and you know what? Look at the last 10 starts. You've got a feeling that he's got a good chance of doing that. A 7-0 record, a 1.99 earned run average. In his last eight starts, he's given up two earned runs or fewer, and for the most part, the stuff for Alex Cobb has been very, very good, but even when it hasn't been, he has shown the ability to make quick adjustments, and that is what has led to this run of sustained success. And a run of success for Cobb against the Orioles in his career. Six starts Five decisions. He's won four of those with an earned run average of 1.89. So it will be game two of the series. The Rays and the Orioles just moments away here in Baltimore.
beautiful evening for baseball in Baltimore where the Rays and the Orioles will meet. Lefty against a right hander way in Chen against Alex Cobb. And the starting lineup for the Rays presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Desmond Jennings will lead it off for the Rays back in the lineup in the top spot. He'll be followed by Ben Zobris and Logan Forsythe. Will make the start, hit third, and play second base in front of the DH, Evan Longoria. Will Myers in right. You know, Escobar at short. James Loney at first base at seventh. Ryan Hannigan just off the DL into the lineup and hitting eighth in front of Sean Rodriguez, who plays third base tonight. Well, taking the mound tonight for the Baltimore Orioles is going to be left-hander Wei Yin Chen. The best way to describe him, steady. 25th start of the season tonight, a record of 13-4, and four, a 3.76 earned run average, and he just does a wonderful job of keeping his team in the game each and every time out there. It's a 13-game winner this year, 7-7 seven and seven last year. And here is Desmond Jennings preparing to step in. Desmond starts the night hitting 240. Takes the first pitch too low. First pitch presented by Pinch a Penny. There's a strike. Uh, Wei Yin Chen, 143 and two thirds innings on the season, just 25 walks. So you know he's going to be around the zone. And four different pitches: fastball, changeup, curveball, and slider. Ground ball headed into center field, out of the reach of Scope, and the Rays have a base runner to start this game. Well, they had the infielders moved around, but Desmond Jennings able to find a hole, as you see. The shift that they have, and he goes up the middle, but to the shortstop side of the bag and able to squeeze it out into center field. Leadoff base runner for the Rays. Tonight's Buick big matchup in this game Ben Zobrist against Wei In Chen. 367 in his career with a double and a home run, 11 out of 30. Takes it back foul strike one and you can bet that this Rays lineup is going to come out aggressive because of what we talked about the lack of walks by Chen his stuff's not going to blow you away but the one thing that he does do with all four of those pitches is he maintains his mix he stays away for the most part of being predictable forces you to have to think about all four of the pitches There's one headed toward the corner in the left. Young will track it down, makes the pickup before it hits the track. Going to be a double for Zobris with Jennings advancing to third. And the Rays have something cooking early tonight. Taking advantage of defensive placements. That ball was just kind of, it got in a little bit on Ben, and it was just more of a fly ball that just kind of checked up like a golf ball. You see this ball coming up and in. He's able to pull the hands in and just place it very well as this ball just kind of dies once it gets out there. Hellman Young just able to get over on the second hop and the race second and third down with nobody. Yeah, Zobra's just playing up on that one. That's it. Second and third with nobody out. He's got a good short game. <laughs> Here's Logan Forsythe. Sometimes that's all you need. Forsythe in the third spot, hitting 240 for the year. There's a strike, Logan. Limited exposure to Chen, but three out of eight with a home run against him. And 270 against lefties. Big opportunity presents itself early. Tap to third. Now Davis with the throw to first. Here comes Jennings, and he is out at the plate. 
Jennings thought he got in there on the play. Zobris goes to third. Joe Madden's going to come out to chat with Pat Holberg, the rookie plate umpire. And he'll take a little time until he gets an indication as to whether the Rays feel Jennings got in there or not. Boy, gutsy play. The reason that Desmond could come off here and kind of tempt it is because nobody's covering third. And then he comes home and let's see. Well, that, that the well that hand, it's close. It's close. It's just hard to see if there's anything definitive. Remember, the call on the field is out, so you're going to have to see something clear and convincing that would lead you to believe that Desmond's hand got in there before the tag. And so far, that angle seems to have eluded us. So we'll see. Or are they, are they calling the, the catcher's play? If Joe, now he's out talking to Jeff Nelson and Pat Holberg. Maybe they're calling about maybe the blocking of the plate. And that's been a, a rather elusive call. And, and, and really, when you look at the setup, Caleb Joseph is not out in front of the plate. There is a lane there. It's the whole front side of the plate. So he may have been inquiring about that because everything happened so quickly. But Caleb Joseph definitely uh, allowed for a lane there for Desmond Jennings. Desmond's got the whole front of that plate to work with. There's the swipe tag coming in. Well, it's going to be a crew chief umpire review, and it has to do with blocking the plate. Well, he blocked it, but look at the whole front part of the plate is exposed. See, it's exp right there. So you, he's not out in front of the plate denying access to the plate. He gave him the whole front half of it. Take another look at that uh, last shot we had. Boy, it would appear difficult to tell because of the depth perception deficit that any of these shots will have, but it appeared that he might have been safe anyway. Well, that, that's where you come into the territory of clear. And convincing yep. and, and with what you just brought up about the depth perception. Can you say definitively yep. that he was tagged and that's the issue that that absolutely is. So we'll all find out soon enough. Graves trying to break out in front. So Jeff Nelson and Pat Hoberg in contact with Command Central. Well, it was a gutsy play by Desmond. That slowly hit Chopper down there to third base to Chris Davis. Well, you'd hate to lose that mm -hmm. second and third nobody out and all of a sudden runner on third with two outs. That'd be a tough way to start. And they're going to call him out. So it goes. Five three to two. Well, here's the throw. There's the front part of the plate Desmond going for and there's that tag that's close. The hand is close. Just nothing that's clear and convincing. Same with this one right here. So the the ruling stands on a 5-3-2 play. And 
the pitch to Evan Longoria is outside. One ball, no strikes. In addition to the official ruling, stands with no violation. That had to do with whether the catcher gave a lane to the plate or not. Longoria with a 1 1 count. Evan, the DH again tonight as he was last night. He's had a little soreness in his right forearm. Foul ball back, one and two. So the Rays have Zobrist at third with two outs. Jennings caught trying to score from third on that tap to third. Ground ball, that's going to go through the right side, and the Rays will get the run. Zobris crosses the plate. It's one nothing Tampa Bay. Well, thank goodness. That would have been a really crummy way to start the game. Second and third, nobody out, and be held without a run. Something that the Rays have struggled with anyway. But two strikes, and Evan Longoria takes a pretty good pitch down and away and just hits it the other way. Wide open hole, as you can see the way they have the shift on him, and Evan just playing pepper with the right side. His 73rd run batted in, 1 0 Rays. And here is Will Myers. Right back into the screen. Let's take a quick look at the Baltimore defense as it lines up tonight and set that for you. Brought to you by Golden Diamond Source in the outfield left to right. Delman Young, Adam Jones, and Nick Markakis across the infield third to first. Chris Davis, J.J. Hardy, Jonathan Scope, and Steve Pierce, Caleb Joseph will be behind the plate. Will starting the night with six home runs on the year. Run since coming back from the disabled list. And, and still trying to define his strike zone. And he is well, coming into last night's game. It was the first game back that he did not strike out. In the first five, he had struck out, what, nine or ten times? Ten times, and, and I think nine looking. Yeah, most of them looking, which is inexplicable, really, as much as that Will Myers likes to swing the bat to get caught looking that many times. It's a ball and two strikes. Myers hit his home run. In the Friday night game of the Toronto series, Rays won that game eight to nothing. Lifts it into right center field. It's Markakis takes care of that. Rays pick up three hits, one run, and lead one nothing.
the top of the first. We go to the home half of the inning. Baltimore coming in to hit, and this is the Orioles lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Nick Marcakis again leads off, then Steve Pierce and Adam Jones. Nelson Cruz hitting clean up the DH. Delman Young, then J.J. Hardy. Chris Davis hit seventh. Caleb Joseph in there. The catcher batting eighth, and Jonathan Sculpt bats ninth, the second baseman. Well, taking the mound tonight for the Tampa Bay Rays, right-hander Alex Cobb making his 21st start of the season. And what kind of run has he been on? His last 10 starts, 7-0 record, 1.99 earned run average. And interestingly enough, that whole streak of starts started right here. That was on June the 29th, picked up a win against the Orioles and has not looked back. After win number 10 tonight, that he faces Nick Markakis. Markakis snapped it 0 for 21 last night with a home run in the third inning. And the first pitch to him is a strike. We have a streak for Alex Cobb, a club record eight consecutive starts, allowing two runs or fewer. The longest active streak in the major leagues and the longest streak in the American League this year behind only. King Felix Felix Hernandez of the Seattle Mariners Hernandez 17 such games consecutively ridiculous that is just dominant which I mean I guess at this stage that's what you come to expect from Felix Hernandez one and one to count to Marquez and a base hit through the open left side as they had Escobar shaded heavily toward the middle now Nick Marquez is a, a nice job of hitting right there going the other way he had been struggling and as you can see where the Rays are lined up you know Escobar right there a lot of open ground between him and Evan Longoria and a pitch that's down in a way and that's exactly what Marquez is going to do is find that little open spot can't cover everything so the Rays had the shade on as opposed to the shift and he still gets a base hit well, they have the shift on now not not a Heavy shade or even a light shade. <laughs> Steve Pierce. First pitch is a strike. We have Logan Forsythe, the second baseman, playing shortstop up the middle. Got the little picket fence working on the left side. You see right there, and all of this room now open to Steve Pierce, although that is not his game. He is an aggressive swinger. He hits the ball over there. Usually it's not by design. This went low and pops away from Hannigan. And into second base goes Mark Kankis. Well, Nick Mark Kankis with very good anticipation there. Coming off of his secondary lead, he reads this ball in the dirt. And immediately heads towards second base. Gets himself into scoring position here with nobody out. Wild pitch. It's the ninth of the year charge to Cobb. And with that split changeup, you're likely to see a few of those pitches in the dirt. It's a challenging night for a catcher. You know, absolutely. And the Rays have a good one back there tonight. Ryan Hannigan coming off the disabled list. We've seen him all season long when he's been out there. Very adept at blocking pitches and keeping them close. One ball, two strikes. Foul ball back. Pierce got into the home run act last night. He followed the Marquecas home run in the third with his 15th home run of the year. He has 15 home runs in 81 games. He cut a foul ball. Holds the count right there at one and two. And we touched on it last night. He was signed by the Orioles. As a free agent, April 29th, after they designated him for assignment and had released him two days before, and because of injuries, they re signed him. And they're happy they did. Oh, yeah. And he figures prominently in this lineup, obviously hitting in the number two hole for a very powerful team. But then you think about with Manny Machado out. 
Now Chris Davis goes over to third base. If Steve Pierce can continue to swing the bat and be productive, he's going to get a lot of time over at first base and become a big part of this Orioles closing run. 2-2 two, two the count. Ground ball short stop. Escobar makes the play with Marquecas remaining at second base. Well, let's take a look at the Rays defense as it lines up tonight brought to you by Gold and Diamond Source in the outfield left to right Ben Zobris, Desmond Jennings and Will Myers across the infield third to first Sean Rodriguez, Janelle Escobar, Logan Forsythe and James Loney. Ryan Hannigan is back behind the plate. So with one out and a man at second the hitter is going to be Adam Jones. Another tremendous year for Adam hitting 288. 24 home runs 78 driven in two for four last night. Well he's ninth in the league in home runs. And the pitch is down at a. Continuing good look. For Adam Jones with his uniform. The, uh, high socks and the short pandalonia. Two balls, no strikes. Uncharacteristic patience here by Adam Jones. Usually he's coming out of that on deck circle, ready to swing, ready to go. the most aggressive hitters in all of baseball and that can be said overall for this Baltimore offense they don't walk a lot and he leads the charge in that department what was it 16 so far this year <laughs> shooting for 20 <laughs> there's a strike and we thought one we thought it was ridiculous when he only walked 25 times last year yeah. and he may not even get there this year. That's right. And, and you know what to be that aggressive to where everybody knows you're a productive hitter in the middle of the lineup that will not walk and yet to continue to put up numbers. Hand eye coordination is pretty good. Three balls and a strike. When you look at the total base leaders in the American League, you start to get an idea of how all encompassing he is when it comes to their offense. He's third, and Nelson Cruz, who leads the major leagues in home runs, is fifth. Three one the count. Make it three and two. Well, Adam Jones, since the beginning of 2013, has given the Rays a hard time. You know, this is a, a pitching staff. When they identify somebody and start to attack them with their game plan, they usually can bottom up pretty good. They have not been able to do that and forget about the defense. He brings that aspect too. He's one of those guys that has numerous ways of beating you. Last night, that play had a one of the best we've seen. And a cut and a miss. He's out on strikes. So a big strikeout for Alex Cobb already with a man in scoring position to retire Adam Jones. And he ended up going up a little bit with that fastball right there. And I'm not convinced that that was on purpose. I think he's just trying to drive one out there with some good velocity. Hannigan giving absolutely no indication that that ball was meant to be up but boy that was effective 93 2 good velocity there by Alex now Cobb faces Nelson Cruz chops it to short for Escobar and his throw to first right there to retire the side. No runs a hit. And a man left. Rays lead one nothing through one.
Baseball on Sun Sports brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. By Checkers, big Philly flavor, small price. Checkers, Philly cheesesteak, and the new Chicken Philly, each just a buck ninety-nine. And by T-Mobile, Tuesday Night Baseball. Rays facing the 29-year-old left-hander way in chin tonight. They got a run, three hits off him in the first inning, and a man cut down at the plate on a crew chief review, which means that Madden, Joe Madden, will keep his challenge. Escobar shoots it up the middle, and it's backhanded by Scope. Scope shaded toward the middle, and he was there to make the catch. I'll tell you, that ball was absolutely drilled by Yanel Escobar. There's Jonathan Scope right there, kind of shading up the middle. And this is where the defensive alignment pays off. That should have been a base hit. Taken away by the shift. Or light shade. Light shade. I like it. <laughs> we've got the shift, and we've got the heavy shade, the regular shade, the light shade. We're going to have to get the 5 o'clock shadow in there somewhere. James Loney fouling it out of play. I could use some light shade for this sunburn that I have working right now. <laughs> you look good. I look like a lobster with a beard. A little color is good. A little color, <laughs> not a whole lot of color. It's a ball and a strike count to Loney. Breaking ball in the dirt. You'll see that occasionally. No more to left handed hitters. Ryan Hannigan on deck. And that takes the count to two and two. Baltimore in with 74 wins and 55 losses. Well, just a couple of years ago, the Orioles were battling to get 74 wins for the entire season. It was two years ago, they had that turnaround season in '93. 93 wins in 2012. Breaking ball that doesn't do much there, and it's three and two. But in 2011, they won 69 games. The year before, 66. The year before that, 64. The year before that, 68. And a base hit into right field. Loney will make the turn and hold there, not running on Marquecas, who has a good arm. And 10 assists on the year. Loney has a base hit. So the Rays with a man aboard and one out in the game tonight, all season long. Tires Plus donates $100 to the Pediatric Cancer Foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports. And that season in 2012, well, that was that was the first. Winning season, first season to go to the postseason since what, 1997? Been amazing the run wow. here that they had had, looking for some success. Hannigan fouls it into the seats up the right side. Ryan Hannigan activated off the disabled list today. Kurt Casale option to Charlotte is a lot closer to the Rays now on that Charlotte roster than he would be going to Durham. And, and an interesting move because you know usually you send the guy down you option the guy to the minor leagues They got to be down there for at least 10 days before you can bring him back However, if a season ends then you're eligible to bring him back quicker and Charlotte's gonna end sooner than anybody So not only is he close as far as miles go But he's also a whole lot closer as far as days go because their season ends of course on Sunday Yeah, that's what the Rays figure to do Hannigan back after 
being on the disabled list with the left oblique strain. Missed 38 games in his second stint on the DL this year. It's a strike, and it's now one and two. Well, anytime you hear of somebody nursing an oblique or they've got an oblique injury, Ryan Hannigan on the disabled list for six weeks, that's what can happen. That's a tough injury in any sport, especially baseball. Yeah, he went to the disabled list grudgingly both times, but there's no way around that oblique. There's just not a lot you can do except wait, let it heal. Pitch in on him and a popper into short right. That's going to be out of the reach of Scope, but he's able to recover. And they make the flip to second base and get the force on Loney. Loney kind of helpless out there. He had to wait to see if Scope could make the catch, and when he could not, the Orioles take advantage and get the force at second. Yeah, James Loney has to stay somewhat tight. It just happened to bounce right up to Scope too, and that's where James Loney was done in but you're just kind of caught out in no man's land if you're too aggressive and he catches it you're out at first. Not much you can do. I'll tell you a heck of a play there by scope to stay with that after that ball got over his over his head like that. Sean Rodriguez. Cut the miss strike one. And again at first with two outs. Big part of that success for this Baltimore team in 2012 when they won 93 games was the bullpen and Jim Johnson at the time. And a big part of their success this year in a little different way is their bullpen. Britain's been out there, but they've got a nice, varied bullpen. We touched on that a little bit last night. You know, when Jim Johnson was cut loose, the, the Orioles actually had him down to Sarasota to work him out. And at the end of the day, there just wasn't going to be an opportunity because of how deep they are. Base hit the other way off the bat of Rodriguez. Hannigan will advance to second and stop. So the Rays have picked up another hit. They have five hits the first time through the order. So far, only one run. Well, a two out opportunity here as you come back to the top of the order. Chen going to go down and away. That's not a bad pitch, but look at Sean Rodriguez stay right on it. Well, that is a nice job right there on a pitch that's not that easy to handle. But yeah, you, you talk about Britain, and then you have Andrew Miller, who they traded for, that Darren O'Day comes from mm -hmm. almost submarine style, a lot of different styles, and a lot of very good bullpen guys having very good years. That's what gives them hope when they start to think about the postseason push and playing in October. Yeah, they don't have the most dominant starting rotation. They don't have swing and miss types guys, but they've been very good. They've been solid. And if they can just be solid, offense, let it do its thing, and then you turn it over to that bullpen, you've got a chance. And there's always the possibility that that lineup will explode. Makes it an interesting team. And one atop the American League East. And they have played well inside the division to build a six game lead over New York. Nine over the Blue Jays, 11 in front of the Rays. Baltimore 31 and 19 inside the division. That's the difference. That is why they're in the position that they're in. They've beaten the teams within the division better than anybody, better than anybody in the American League. And you look about. You know, Oakland, what they've done in the West. No one's done it better than Baltimore in the East. And the Rays. Rays are 4 9 against them. And three of those wins have come here. Well, they took three out of four against the Orioles. Two and two. 
Close take by Jennings and a good one and not much that pitch is even better than the one Rodriguez was able to get to just off. Ground ball up the middle through in the center. Hannigan's headed to the plate. Throw from short center from Jones. That's going to be in time. Joseph puts the tag on Hannigan, and the Rays lose their second runner at the plate tonight. Jennings a base hit up the middle, and Adam Jones goes to Joseph to cut down Hannigan. Jones got to that ball in shallow center field. victimized at the plate two times they still lead this game one to nothing and you're going to see a heck of a throw here by Adam Jones as he comes up and gets ready to throw to the plate this is your issue the mound if it hits the front side of it closest to Adam Jones it's going to pop in the air but look where this throw is targeted the back side it skims off the back side slope towards the plate right into the glove of Caleb Joseph and he makes the tag unbelievable throw and perfectly placed you know the other obstacle in that throw was scope the second baseman and you could see him duck to get out of the way of that throw and, and that in turn it ends up being on scope because when you're that center fielder you know Adam Jones he's coming up with that ball thinking I'm firing this thing to the plate and if it clips scope well that's on scope so you better have your head on swivel <laughs> one strike to count to Delman Young Young Hardy and Davis raised with six hits already through the first two innings with just one run two strikes to count Ball two strikes. Alex Cobb gave up a base hit to Marcakis in the first. Got the next three hitters. One and two with Young. Delman Young, big night last night. A walk, a single, home run, and a double in that order. Two and two. Talk about how this Baltimore lineup loves to swing the bat. You put Jones and Young in the same lineup, that greatly affects how many times you're going to walk or not walk. And there's a swing and a miss 
Delman Young out on strike. Second strikeout here for Cobb. And we'll check in with Todd Callis. Dwayne, the Rays did find out word today from the Major League Baseball offices that their protest was denied. It all stemmed from this situation Saturday against the Blue Jays. Will Myers picked off. He was called safe initially. John Gibbons a little late in, in determining that he needed a challenge. The Rays said, hey, here, you can see right there, batter in the box, rubber on the pitchers, on the rubber. And then comes John Gibbons calling time. MLB said that that wasn't really a protestable situation for the Rays because it involved replay. So Joe Madden accepted the ruling, said he respects the decision, although he fully doesn't understand it even to this day. Yes. Gotcha. And uh, it is a little difficult to follow the logic of that, but the ruling is what the ruling is. And so you move forward. Well, except for the fact that it's not protestable, but you can log the protest. You can submit your side of things and it can take a couple of days, but you could never protest it from the beginning. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm telling you, the logic is a little difficult to follow. A lot difficult to follow. <laughs> I, it, it is strange. Why why have uh, a rule governing when you can issue a challenge and at what point does it expire your ability to uh, issue a challenge? Effectively, you don't. I guess you can do it anytime you want. As long as the crew chief in, in his judgment thinks that it was timely enough. That rule is now null and void. Apparently, because well. you couldn't get any more cut and dry than it was. Well, here are the rules, and we've gone over those a couple of times when it happened and uh, in subsequent conversations. This is about this right in here is where I start to get the headache. <laughs> is that about where you? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. A lot of wiggle room, apparently, when you get down to the third line. This one is going to be a foul ball. You know, how, what about the manager? And, and it, it will come to pass that a manager will want to issue a challenge and an, an umpire is going to say, no, you're too late. Well, wait a minute. What do you mean I'm too late? The precedent's been set. Yeah, well, yeah, that <laughs> judgment. That, that's yeah, you're, really. you're allowed all the latitude. Just be really nice to the crew chief. <laughs> that is exactly right. So the count still two and two. And I think really when it, when it comes down to it, you were hoping that they would do the right thing. But ultimately, I think the thought was that game's been played and that's the way it's going to go in the books, period. Mm -hmm. okay. So not really a surprise. Well, I found myself uh, absolutely agreeing with Madden. Yeah. I don't think you could argue it any other way. I thought it was pretty clear, his case. And, uh, and I thought Joe Madden, before the game today, expressing uh, how much... Uh, he thinks of Joe Torrey and he holds him in high regard as we all do. We've known Joe for a long time. We partnered with him in the booth a few times and uh, whatever he did played hit caught played first base third base managed broadcast now in his role in the baseball office. He's done a great job and you have to respect him. And that's the attitude that uh, Joe Madden takes. In regard to this ruling, not necessarily happy, doesn't understand it, but he'll accept it and go on. Yeah, look, and you know what? That's smart for a manager to do, the leader of this team, to not dwell on it, kick your can. He presented his case, yep. he presented it very well. I think at the end of the day, he was 100% right. But when the decision is handed down and it's done and it's over with, it's time to get your guys focused on the task at hand, and that's the next game. Yep. So we're going to accept it, move on, don't completely understand it, doesn't matter what's in front of us. And so that's the absolute right way uh, for Joe to go about that. And, and I was so impressed with his argument and the way that he presented it that I approached him on the flight here 
and submitted my resume and told him that I would love to intern at his law firm. And he <laughs> told me he'd take a couple days and get back to me. So we'll see. There you go. I think he holds you in high regard. I think you got a chance. Well, we'll hopefully by the time we get back home, <laughs> we've got an answer. 2-0 the count to Chris Davis. Hardy has walked with one out. Well, there just can be no distractions from here on out for the race. It has to be each and every inning of each and every game. They've got to at some point get on a big time run if, if they want to be relevant here in September. Yeah, and Madden's take is, is again, I think the right one as the manager of this team. He says, look, it's a long shot, but as long as it's mathematically possible, his mindset is to do everything he can do to make it happen. You never know. Yeah. You never know. So you like that. I you love really that. like that approach. You can't do anything but appreciate it. Well, there's ball four. Back to back walks. Hardy and Davis. Well, that's going to get Jim Hickey out here. Very uncharacteristic of Alex Cobb. Usually very good command. Good idea. The strike zone. J.J. Hardy. He worked a pretty good at bat. Fouled off some tough pitches. He lost Chris Davis, and Chris Davis has been struggling. He hit the home run in yesterday's ball game, but offensively, he has had a tough year for the Orioles. Hey, fans, follow every Rays game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store or visit RaysBaseball.com today. A couple runners on base with one out. Caleb Joseph will be the hitter. Well, this guy turned out to be a little bit of a surprise for Baltimore when Matt Wieters went down. They called Joseph from the minor leagues and were pretty happy with the job he can do behind the plate. Didn't expect a lot of offense. But in the first week of this month, he had a stretch of five straight games in which he hit a home run. Eight home runs total. Bounces this one foul. I know that that caught our attention. Sure did. We were like, wait a minute, Caleb Joseph, who, by the way, Buck Walter had said, hey, listen, Nick Hunley's going to get give me a little bit more on the offensive end, but Caleb Joseph does a little bit more for me on the defensive end. All of a sudden, five straight games, he's popping balls out of the yard. That, I don't grab you. Two men on, one out. Hot shot down through the third base coaching box and. Nice play. Good range. Good defense all around here in Baltimore. You know, the interesting thing about Joseph, he has shown some pop. He's not necessarily a high average guy, but in the minor leagues, he had 22 home runs last year in the minor leagues. But five in a row. Out of play. Still two strikes. That's the other thing about this Baltimore club. They've accomplished what they've accomplished without Matt Weeders for the most part. Uh -huh. Now they've lost Machado again. And two guys counted on heavily when the season started. Machado, he wasn't going to be ready until into the season a little bit. Line drive, third base. Long throw to first, and Rodriguez bounces it past Loney, and the runners are going to move up. Well, we've seen that a couple times from Sean Rodriguez over at third. That, that's what you're always afraid of. We saw one last night, then we saw one in the dirt by design. And Sean here, a nice job of corralling his hard hit ball from Caleb Joseph. And then sensing a chance for a double play, just whistles this ball across the field. And James Loney not able to corral it. Sean Rodriguez with the throwing error. First error in this game tonight. Second and third, two gone. And here's Jonathan Scope.
takes one a little low. The ball, no strikes on scope. Scope just 22 years old. One and one. One of Curacao. Been playing in the Baltimore organization since 09 and got into a handful of games with the big club last year. Played for the Netherlands in the World Baseball Classic. Fouls it outside of third, one and two. He's hitting a little extended for Cobb. Forty one pitches overall. Twenty five in this inning. Two and two. Well, that fastball just missing off the plate. You expect Alex Cobb right here to go to the changeup. You got a two-two count. If I'm Alex, the way that that thing's been darting tonight, I'm going to go with it back-to-back -back pitches here. If you even need the second one. He started to go. Oh, he checked. Barry down at first. Full count. Now let's take a look. Jonathan Scope going down. He does hold up. If I'm Alex, I'm going to say, nice take. Can you do it again? The answer is no. <laughs> and he cannot. He cannot. He missed it. Swinging over it as it disappeared on him. Third strikeout for Cobb. Second of the inning. Baltimore leads two. The Rays hold a one nothing lead. By H.H. H. Gregg. Rays of the Orioles squaring off again tonight. Two more games left in this series after tonight. The Rays will be home Friday night with Boston in. Boston in for three. Blue Jays in for three, and then Baltimore in for three. 
on the back side of this next homestand. Ben Zobrist, who doubled and scored in the first, leads off the third. All one. Double. Ben has a home run and two doubles in his career against the Baltimore left hander. Shortens and takes the pitch for ball two. I mean, Ben, we've seen him bunt for a hit before, actually, on this road trip. And right now, he's looking around the infield, and if he gets that down past Chen, that would have been a hit. Nobody paying him any mind on the bunt. Foul ball back to two. Ben with that one home run off Chin. Chin's given up 21 home runs this year, the sixth highest total in the American League. But he doesn't walk many people, and so most of those home runs are solo home runs. Now it's going to go full on Ben Zobis. In fact, he gave up a home run to the very first battery faced in the major leagues back in 2012. Derek Jeter homered off Chen in his major league debut and Chen's debut. High fly ball to right. Marcakis handles this one. So one out in the third. Reminder fans, tomorrow is Wednesday night showdown presented by Mazda. As the Rays take on the Baltimore Orioles again at 6:30 right here on Sun Sports, and another Web Wednesday rolls around tomorrow. Logan Forsythe, all one to Logan. Two balls, no strikes. You can see Chen now trying to establish the inside part of the plate because the Rays hitters, have, they've been in the box, they've been comfortable, they know he's going to throw strikes, they've put good swings on him. They haven't been able to cash in quite yet as far as runs go, but they've certainly had him in trouble. Yeah, six of the first ten hitters did exactly that, hit their way on. You just do not want this to turn into another game where well they had him on the ropes early and only able to play one run comes back to haunt you late. Oversight. That pitch by plenty two and two slider had some bite on it. And you, you can see Chen already trying to change up his approach realizing what I started out this game with is not working. So now I'm going to start working hitters in. Forsyth in this number three spot. Not the first time he's at third. In fact, this is the fifth start he's made this year in the third spot. It's in off the plate. The count is full. Back to back full counts here to start the third inning. Seven Longoria on deck. Another 3 2 pitch about to be made to Forsyth. And he draws the walk this time. So the Rays get another base runner. And they've had a lot of those in the early stages of this game. Two men thrown out of the plate and just one run. And here is Evan Longoria. Evan drove in that run with a base hit 
into right field. He was down in the count one and two the Rays were a strike away from not scoring at all in that inning. He's under it lifts it into left center. Jones over there making the call and the catch. Two outs. Uh, he was going for it there. He was going for it there. You know that hit in his first at bat like you said two strikes a pitch was down and away. And they had that shade played over on him. The whole right side was open. So you understand there, you know, him going that way to drive the run in. That at bat right there, he cut it loose and just got underneath it. He was that close to popping that ball out of here. Now here's Will Myers with Forsyth aboard. Two outs now. He drives this one to left, but Young is right there, back a few steps. No runs, a walk, and a man left. Bottom of inning, three coming, one nothing, Tampa Bay. Leading one to nothing. Of course, when the trading deadline passed, the Rays made that big deal involving the Tigers and the Mariners. A lot more expected from Alex Cobb and others. And Alex now, almost a month from that trading deadline, addresses that situation. When David did leave, you know, everybody was all eyes were on on the rotation to see how they handled it and um, if they were able to. Keep the uh, you know, and it's not easy to keep those expectations. If you're a tick below, you know it's going to be blown up. So um, to kind of, I don't you know, kind of stay the same and maybe even got in better as a consistent group. Um, you know, it's it's great to have happened at the time it's happened, but we got to, you know, guys have to understand why things are happening right now and continue that. And, and it has been impressive to watch, guys. The entire rotation, obviously a blip yesterday for Jake Odorizzi, but the entire rotation so good this month. You're right about that as Nick Markakis fouls the first pitch up the right side for a strike. Well, the rotation, when you take a look at the, how good the pitching has been since the 1st of August, 2.72 for that rotation, third best. In baseball. Well, and that'll be an interesting list to watch over time. We, we know that Mariners staff and how good they are. You saw who was second in starter ERA in that time frame. The Cleveland Indians. That's the only other starting rotation that's younger as a group than the Rays. And they're very, very close. A lot of good young starters between those two teams. Well, they could take it 
as a downer when the deal was made or they could take it as a challenge right and there was no question even before in anticipating a possible deal I think this bunch was looking to continue the level that they've been pitching at and improve it and that's what they've done yeah they, they, they all have a tremendous amount of pride in what they do and how they go about their business and how hard they work you know these are the days that you get to see Alex Cobb do his thing when he does it so well like we so often see it's the four days that you don't get to see mm -hmm. that's when you're preparing yourself for this one day and that's the that's the challenge of being a starting pitcher because a great outing that's great you get four days you work hard you come back when you start to struggle or you have a bad outing, and then have to sit there and think about it and chew on it for four days but this is a, a, a proud group and then Drew Smiley of course has come over and and just throwing the ball great that helps too you know you're tempted to say for Smiley that there was hardly any transition at all but of course there has been and it's been a very positive transition for him he's pitching better now than he's ever pitched yeah I think the Rays had some ideas to give him mm -hmm. I don't think they gave him very much yep. because they, they want to let him do his thing and let him be comfortable but he also is coming into a situation with good teammates yep. and other good you know starters as far as you just slide right in you fit right in they welcome you and they let you go and do your thing. And it's amazing how quickly he has fit right in with this uh, rotation and this staff. We've talked about how they all seem to congregate in the same area of the dugout. It's a close knit group, and he has fit right in. Retired the last 19 men he faced in his last outing. And Kankis draws a walk here. Well, that's the third walk given up by Cobb, which is unusual. Very, very unusual. Very unlike him. Cobb, Cobb is wondering about the count, and I think he's right. I think that's ball three. And uh, Markek is headed to first. Buck Showalter out, out to. I had 2-2 two -two in my scorebook, wondering if maybe I'd missed a pitch when Markek took off. But I think the count now should be three and two. But uh, you know what? If it is, you've got to tip your hat to Marquecas because that sell job was tremendous. And Buck Showalter trying to convince this entire umpiring crew that there was a phantom pitch thrown in there and uh, it was a ball. And I think Nick is saying, hey, listen, there was only three balls I'm ready to hit. Go ahead and go back. We're good. Don't you love replay? <laughs> and they're going to replay it to check the count. They're going to replay it to check the count. And they're going to find that it should be a full count now. And all of this while Alex Cobb has to sit out there and wait for more than likely throwing one pitch that's going to decide this AB. Well, they're checking with Command Central and they'll go pitch by pitch. There were a couple of foul balls in there. Count we had here was two and two. We had six pitches thrown before that last one, which would have made the count three and two instead of ball four. It's always a strange feeling when you see a guy take off for first and you're not quite sure that that was ball four, but here's pitch by pitch. Clearly a strike and 0 and 2 right there, right off the bat. So four pitches in, 0 2. There you go. There's your first. And you miss off. And you're going to miss off again. Yep. It's 3 and 2. Pretty cut and dry.
Well, I'm waving my hat. Well, not my hat, <laughs> but what would be my hat up here. We got it, guys. And how do we have it so much sooner than they do? Are we that good, Dwayne? Apparently. Well, not us. Know, the no, truck. it's our crew. Right. I mean, we have the best crew going. And uh, I think we've proven it by how quickly we resolved this already. Okay, th this there is, is some humor in this now. Th this is where it's ridiculous that we can sit up here and pop through that that quick. There we go. They got it eventually. Well, they got it right. That's what this is all about at the end of the day. Such a bad argument. <laughs> I'm so tired of that argument. <laughs> It's such a, a throwaway for everything. <laughs> so it's a full count. So they had to review the count here. And now the 3 2 pitch is straight three call for Kekas. Call out on strikes. How about Alex Cobb coming right back with the pitch that he had missed with twice previously to get to three and two? And he goes, You know what? I'm not missing three in a row. And watch the late action coming back towards the plate. That is beautiful. Yeah, I mean, when you know it, you know it. You don't have to wait for the call. <laughs> so, one away. Here's Steve Pierce. He takes a big cut and misses. So strikeout number four for Alex Cobb. Alex walked a couple hitters in the second. It's the leadoff strikeout here of Marcakis. The shift on for Pierce. And the count is 0-2 to him. Shallow left. Escobar starts out. Zobris in, but Escobar calls it. Two gone. So two outs. The base is empty. Tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. How about this for the American League's longest current winning streak? Alex Cobb. And then Scott Atchison with Aaron Crow. You know what? This is right here. This is why you extend. That's why you get extensions. You win six in a row. Out of the bullpen. Yeah. No less. Mm -hmm. This keeps on ticking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a warm, fuzzy feeling for the rest of this game now. I think we all will. But we can't wait to see the Indians again. That's One where we end. Count. Yeah, that's where we end. Mm -hmm. I can see it now. The end of the regular season. Hearty handshake. An embrace and a fond farewell. To Scott Atchison. Have a camera there. <laughs> Jones chases this one. 2 He's hey, our I, favorite. Listen, I, I, I've already run into him. Yeah. And and told him what fans yeah, he, we were. Yeah. He appreciated it. I, think, I don't think he understands it, but well, he did appreciate it. Terry Francona gave him a heads up. He did. <laughs> and someone wants to talk to you. I said, listen, it's not going to make any sense to you, but just go with it. Yeah. We adore you. <laughs> this pitch is <laughs> Yeah, and how that moment was not memorialized on video somehow. It was a great baseball moment. It was. Behind the scenes. <laughs> that moment and, and then the, the other moment where it all came to pass. Yep. I know days we've never forgotten. Neither's the truck. No. 
He saved the telecast and a bullpen all in one. <laughs> one ball, two strikes, the count to Adam Jones. And a swing and a miss. So Jones is out on strikes. We go to the fourth. One nothing raise. With one nothing, Ray's wives host the fourth annual Mystery Ball to benefit All Children's Hospital Saturday, August 30th against the Red Sox. These mystery baseballs are autographed by Ray's players and All Stars from around the league. Baseballs will go on sale at gates one and five. When gates open, they'll be forty dollars. For more information, visit RaysBaseball.com/slash Mystery Ball. Gunnell Escobar will open the fourth for the Rays, then James Loney and Ryan Hannigan. The Rays have had runners in every inning. Six hits and a walk, but only one run. Escobar lined a second his first time. What a hit. And a run scored last night. In there, one and one. Two balls, one strike. Ray's getting their fourth look. This year at Wei In Chen. Short stop. Hardy's long throw is there. Escobar is the first out. Chen pitched against the Rays here in Baltimore in the middle of April. Beat them seven to one, gave up a run on five hits and six and a third in that one. And then saw the Rays in short order pitching against him. Twice in the span of three starts on June the 16th at the drop, had a no decision, and left that game down three to two. Escobar and Hannigan hit home runs off him. They're both in the lineup tonight. In that game, here's James Loney. And the pitch is a strike at the knees. And then the Rays beat him on the 28th of June, five to nothing, five runs in three and a third. They've had a lot of hits, a lot of base runners tonight, but only one run so far. And that's what stands out when you look at this 
what they've done off Chen this year is each and every time they face him, they've given him more and more trouble. And today it's not manifesting itself on the scoreboard. A lot of hits, like you said, a lot of base runners, a lot of opportunities, but just one run, two runners thrown out at the plate. You do not want to let him wiggle off the hook and all of a sudden become a game that gets kind of hairy at the end. Yeah, the Rays have lost two runners at the plate. And so you'd love to see them break through here against Chen, cash in some runs. And we've seen Chen change his approach here as this game has moved on because the first couple of innings wasn't working out well. We had four outs, six outs total, two of them at home played, but had given up six hits and ten batters. Loney just a little piece of that one to hang in there. Maloney with a base hit his first time. And that gives him four for nine in his career against this lefty. Two of those four hits doubles. Ground ball short, backhanded by Hardy. Throw will one hop in and Pierce kept his foot on the bag and comes up with that throw cleanly to retire Loney. Yeah, that not an easy play at all. Again, one of those in-between type hops that you're going to see Steve Pierce going down to try to get the best perspective he can on what was going to be a tough scoop. Low, 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 and able to snag it at the end and keep the foot on the bag. Well, you got to be mindful of the ball and remember to keep that foot attached. Well, Pierce saved Hardy an error there, and he salutes him for it. Those little acknowledgments go a long way. Here's Ryan Hannigan. Fastball, and he takes that for a strike. One and one. First time in this game that Chen has retired the first two hitters in an inning. That's a curveball in there, and that's taken for strike two. Now one and two. Still a one two count. Ray's trying to gain some traction here toward the 500 mark. The last time they were at 500, they were 61 and 61. Alex Cobb pitched that game. They come into this one three under. Two and two. And they trail Toronto. By two games in the standing, so two games behind third place Toronto. Full count. The Blue Jays are home against the Red Sox. Toronto hitting in the bottom of the fourth, and the Red Sox currently have a three to one lead. Ball four. So Hannigan draws a two out walk. Here are those two plays at the plate. An aggressive base running here by Desmond Jennings. Good relay by Pearson. Tagged by Joseph. Able to get him. That would be replayed. And you can see right there Jeff Nelson signaling out. And here Adam Jones once again. And how about the throw on the back side of the mound? That is a pretty throw. Great tag, too. Sean Rodriguez takes a big cut. He had a fastball up that time. Tried to jump all over it, and he fouled it back.
two outs with Hannigan aboard. Rodriguez came up with a base hit his first time. It's just a little bit wide. One and one. Two strikes. The foul ball. Yankees and Tigers underway at the end of an inning. No score. Tigers trailing Kansas City by a game and a half in the Central. Take there on the breaking ball up. Two and two. Out of play. So the Rays batting in the bottom of the Fourth inning. We have gone through the lineup twice so far. The run six hits and a couple of walks. Round ball. Hardy with a nice pickup and the toss to scope for the force. So the Rays are out in the fourth. They lead one nothing. Thirty fourth home run of the season for Baltimore on Friday leads the major leagues now in home runs with thirty four our Toyota trend Jose Abreu Abreu with thirty three Stanton with the Marlins also thirty three Chris Carter and David Ortiz how about Chris Carter in Houston with thirty one home runs fourth in the major league home run derby. And Cruz will lead off the bottom of the fourth for Baltimore. Cruz, then Delman Young and J.J. Hardy. Cobb, 59 pitches through the first three. The second inning required 28 of those 59 pitches. Getting up a hit and a couple of walks, five strikeouts. No runs through three. 
And he faces Cruz to lead it off. Well, no spots in this lineup where you can really take a breath, especially now. You get Nelson Cruz, major league leader with the home runs. To strike the Cruz. Overall, Alex throwing the ball well, and he's had to. A little margin for error here, just a one run lead. The knees, strike two. You see this ball, they wanted this ball in, but even with it being out over the plate, Alex is able to put it down in the strike zone to get that call. It's a ball and two strikes. Rays had the shift on for Cruz until the count got to two strikes. They moved Forsyth back on the first base side of second, but a deep second. Two and two. It's Delman Young on deck. Just outside the third base, and the count holds at 2 2. The major league home run leading lineup. We're looking at him here with Baltimore 168 home runs. And it's not even close. No, next would be Colorado over in the National League with 150. Shot through the left side. Out of Escobar's range. And Cruz has a base hit. Those are the frustrating types of hits to give up because you jump out in front 0 and 2. He battles you back to even and then finds a hole right there. Just a chopper that you know Escobar is not able to get to. And the leadoff runner aboard. You know, when you mention those home runs, when they hit a home run, 63 and 27 is their record. When they hit multiple, and you can imagine 39 and 10. That's what happened here last night beyond multiple. Here's Delman Young. One ball, no strikes. This is one of those lineups that you face and you sleep really well that night. Even <laughs> if you do throw a good game. Yep. Because they've really had to work your way through it. Yeah. Physically and mentally. It's draining. Five different hitters hit those home runs last night. Delman, big cut, and he swings over that pitch. One and one. And, and you know what's scary about that? That two guys that didn't have any home runs last night are the two leaders on their team, Nelson Cruz and that's, Adam Jones. That's right. Nary a home run. Five other guys. <laughs> They've got seven guys, double digit home runs. One and two. And that's not even counting JJ Hardy, who's having a down year with home runs. This guy, for a span, had the most home runs of any shortstop in the American League for two or three straight years. Yeah, and it took him a while to find that stroke. Mm -hmm. He now has, came into last night with seven, so he has eight home runs now. You've got to treat him like the rest because there are a couple of years there. He was going 20 plus every year. Two and two. Cobb has been protecting a one run lead since the first inning. The second time tonight, the leadoff man on base. For Baltimore. Count 
holds it 2 2 with that big swing and a foul ball. Yep, and, and right there, Delman Young wishing that he had another shot. That was a, a change up by Alex that didn't have the depth. That, that pitch stayed up and out over the plate. Fortunate that that is just fouled off and you get another opportunity to try to wipe him out. We saw that in Alex's last start. Not a lot of finish to his changeup. And he was almost using it more as a straight change. And he's got that ability. Another one fouled off his foot. And well, that's the one thing that as Alex continues to show maturity as a starting pitcher being quicker to make adjustments when he realizes a certain pitch is there. It's not there. It's not quite as sharp as I would like it. He finds his you know finds a way to get around that until it can find its way that pitch can he can get back to its, his release point and be more effective with it. That's something that played Jake Odorizzi in, in last night's game not willing or able to go to any other pitches and Baltimore just continued to hammer away. Ooh, close. And the count is full. Fastball just missed. And he just missed. Good idea here by Alex. 2-2 aggressive with the heater and that late sink took it just off. See Hannigan give Pat Holberg a good look. Count is full. And again, just off the disabled list. And again, a foul ball. Well, we saw. Delman Young extend a couple of at-bats last night. He saw 31 pitches in four plate appearances last night. And an 11 pitch at-bat in the third when he singled. Batting here in the fourth. This next pitch will be the ninth of this at-bat. Two men are on. Well, and Alex tried to get tricky there. He kept shaking off Ryan Hannigan until he got to the curveball. Going to throw him something a little different, give him a different look because it had been primarily fastball changeup. And that pitch out of the hand just was not competitive. It was down immediately on its release point. Easy for Delman Young to recognize. Now you've got your work cut out for you, but the one thing we do know about Alex, he can ring up a lot of ground balls, and he can use one here. Well, J.J. Hardy walked in the second inning. That's here in the fourth. And his power has started to come back, and he's been very good with men in scoring position. Third in the league in that department at 347. Takes a good look at a fastball in off the plate. One ball, no strikes. out in the fourth. There's a strike one and one. So a situation right here for Alex Cobb. He got out of a situation in the second inning. They put two men on with one out. Been on nobody out now. One ball, two strikes, foul ball. So he's gotten ahead of Hardy. Now what? Hannigan and Cobb in that conference. Well, 
Alex, when he gets you to two strikes, he makes life very difficult for you. He's holding the opposition to a 142 average, just a 201 on base. He wants to wipe you out. And that's what he's going to try and do here. Something nasty to get the strike out, get a ground ball. Maybe works out even better. Hardy takes it low, two and two. Well, you, know, you get it. Give a little bit of credit here to these Baltimore hitters. They've done a better job second time through the lineup taking some pitches that have been borderline pitches that they chased the first time through. Big power on deck. Chris Davis power at the plate. J.J. Hardy. And now the count is full. Close misses has run this count full. Another fastball down and just off. See all those pitches trying to keep it close to Hardy. Well, he's three and two with him now. Foul. Those are the pitches right there that Alex is banking on you swinging and missing at. That's a good changeup right there. We saw Delman Young able to fight off a couple and foul him off. Same thing with J.J. Hardy. Those are, that's frustrating for a pitcher when that ball comes out of your hand. You're like, this is my put away. And they're able to go down and spoil it. Force you to another pitch. Three two again and he lines it foul. That's what that, that is exactly what JJ Hardy is trying to get you to do. Foul off the tough pitches, foul off the put away so that I can get one that you leave in the zone. And he's just a little too quick on it. You know, he knows Alex Cobb does not want to walk another hit and walk the second hitter in a row to load the bases. And Alex needs to let this pitch go as if there's nobody on base. Three two again. Sky into right. Myers back for it just to the edge of the track. The tag at second. Cruz will advance to third. So the Rays get it out. The Orioles get a base. It's first and third with one gone. Extended it bat for Hardy. And as hard as Cobb has been working tonight, out of the dugout to the mound goes Jim Hickey. Yep. Give him a little bit of a breather, go over what they're going to do here with Chris Davis. You've got a guy at the plate that's a prime candidate for a strikeout. And that's what Alex could use right here. There's Chris Davis. We'll remind you it's time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag SunSports. Fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Scale conference going on out there. And Holberg, the rookie umpire, working the plate tonight. Holberg, just 27 years old, out of Iowa. Oh, long line of. Umpires from Iowa, including Tim McClellan and Eric Cooper, Mike Everett, Mike Riley, the pride of Sioux City, Iowa, now retired. I'll tell you what, that's pretty impressive breaking into, I mean, the umpires at the big league level, not easy to get there. Yeah, to get there at 27, yep. it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Chris Davis fouls it back, rolling it to the base of the stands. Well, you know where Davis' hot zone would be, right down the middle. Seems like the plan is pretty simple. <laughs> Avoid that. And I think that's anybody's hot zone, right? <laughs> I mean. I don't care who you are, you got to be able to hit that pitch. 
One ball, one strike. First and third. <laughs> Not like that one and it left a hand. Well, you know what? Regardless, he's gotten Davis now to two strikes and not been trying to put him away. But this. Yeah, hot zone. And he almost made it hot sauce. Well, and, well, and here's the thing, too. We're, and it was 300 right down the middle. So it's not even really a hot zone as much as it's like a warm place I let you, like <laughs> what's what's inside of a zone a warm matrix I don't know if that's big enough to be considered a zone just stay out of there regardless pitch is a strike call and on the pitch Delman Young Delman Young steals second base Davis called out on strikes and Young took off to Pick up his first stolen base of the year. And no throw by Hannigan. A good fastball here. Catches Davis looking. And you see Hannigan come firing out, ready to throw. And then doesn't. You just wonder where's the coverage? Is there coverage? And they had that shift pulled around on Davis. Coverage a little bit late. No throw by Hannigan. Caleb Joseph. Pitch inside, one and out. One ball, no strikes on Joseph. Two. Joseph hit the ball hard on a line to Sean Rodriguez at third base in the second. Orioles with runners at second and third. A single and a walk started this inning. Two and one on the foul ball. Joseph got to the big leagues in early May in their Triple-A affiliate at Norfolk. Eight home runs now with the Orioles. He had two in the minor leagues before his call-up. And it's three and one. Cobb trying to be very careful and has been working from behind a lot in this inning. Yeah, he, he is working extremely hard for every single out in this game. Things not coming easy for Alex tonight, but what you like about him is his tenacity. He just continues to fight you, battle you. He's up to 90 pitches already just here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Just will not give in. Reiner in the center. Will not be caught. Cruz scores. Young scores. Joseph a base hit. That had a little sink to it. And Jennings could not get there in time to successfully catch it. It's two to one Baltimore. Well, it was a great jump by Jennings. And he had a shot. He had a shot at it. This ball, I don't know if it goes in the glove or under the glove, but he Gets to the point to go down. You can't really tell from there. Bottom line is it squirts free and the Orioles get two runs that close. Boy, just off the. Had a shot. 
Well, those are tough. The line drives right at you, trying to run in, slide, make that catch. The scope chopping one to short. Escobar to second to Forsythe for the force. But the Orioles score two and they take a two to one lead. Bay Rays baseball on Sun Sports brought to you by Circle K. For any size polar pop cup is 79 cents every day. Circle K. What else do you need? By Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop choosenissan.com. And by Bert Smith Volkswagen, Tampa Bay's home of driving excitement. Visit BertSmithVW.com. Twenty nine year old lefty way in Chen goes to the mound here in the fifth inning. He now has a two to one lead. Rays have had runners in every inning against him but they've lost two men trying to score. Meanwhile the Orioles forced Alex Cobb to make over 30 pitches in the bottom of the fourth. Putting the first two men on and it's difficult with men at first and second and nobody out to get out of an inning unscored upon and with two outs the base hit by Joseph gave Baltimore the two to one lead. First pitch is a strike to Desmond Jennings. Desmond puts down a bunt. Chin with the pickup, a little underhanded toss to first. So Desmond is retired. Yeah, for that play to be successful, you've got to be able to punch it by the pitcher. If you're able to do that with Desmond's speed and momentum heading towards first base, you've got a shot. And that one never got there. Kirby Yates loosening in the Rays bullpen. Cobb has made 92 pitches tonight through four innings. Here's Ben Zobrist. Off speed pitch. One ball, no strikes. The curveball too high. You'll see that on occasion from Chen. That time he tried to throw a get me over curve and he comes right back with it. We've seen a miss on a couple of attempts with that up, and that first pitch was up. But he came right back with it to get the strike one and one. That's when you immediately identify what went wrong with the previous pitch and say, I'll fix that and go ahead and get a strike here. And now it's one and two. Followed up to two curveballs with a fastball. And you can see Zobra is attempting to bump. Saw him do that in his last at bat. Two and two back to the curveball to Ben. Well, 
starting his third time through the order Chen. He got Jennings on the bunt three out of his four pitches have been curveballs to Zobris. On the pitch inside. The count is full. There's ball four. Rays get a base runner. Zobris was in the top ten and walks, picks up his 64th walk of the year. Well, the Rays need a rally when Raymond isn't around to help ignite a Rays rally. His gnome may be able to do the trick. The Raymond rally gnome available only through the purchase of a Tampa Bay Times ticket tandem when the Rays take on the Red Sox Friday, August 29th for tickets. Visit RaysBaseball.com or call 888 Fan Rays. Logan Forsythe. Pitch is away to him. 1 0. We talked about all the power the Orioles have had, but their pitching's done a nice job as well. Their fifth. In the American League and team ERA at 360. The Rays are third at 348. There's another miss up, and that's going to get a visit from Joseph, the catcher. Yeah, neither one of the starting pitchers here tonight in this ball game have been particularly sharp, both battling not only the opposing lineups, but themselves at times. That has shown up. In the walk column, the pitch counts, the time of game. I don't figure a two to one game through four complete would be at the two hour mark. And there have been a lot of pitches thrown so far. And this ball misses for ball three. And it's three and oh. Braves. To take advantage of Chen here in the fifth inning. Zobris back in at first. A lot of running done in games with Chen on the mound. Only one steal against him all year. Yeah. Controls the running game very well. For a lefty, even for a lefty, has that built in advantage of looking over there at the base runner. As you figure, most of the stolen bases are from first to second. Here's Brad Brock in the Orioles' bullpen, so we've seen both bullpens now busy here in the fifth inning. Fly ball. Center field, Jones goes back to his left. It'll be the second out. And Evan Longoria is up here now. The DH for the second straight night, bothered by a sore right forearm. Evans singled home the one run the Rays have tonight back in the first inning. The strike starts the at bat. Well, Evan with the base hit the other way in his first plate appearance on a pitch down and away with two strikes. Then he Went for broke and a first pitch fastball skied it down into left center field. And that time Chen starts him off with the slider. It's low. Scooped by Joseph. You get that feeling that Evan Longoria is going to try to do that to you again. You go off speed to get ahead. And try to work him from there. We've seen Chen try to change his approach against the Rays lineup after they banged out six hits in the first two innings of this game. Yeah, the Rays have had runners in every inning, but in the last three, they've come on single walks in each inning. 
after six hits in the first two innings and just one run to show for it. Well, here's an opportunity. 2 1 count. Chen, you better believe at this point, he doesn't walk many guys to begin with. He's tired of walking hitters. This is going to be a pitch that Evan should get a pretty good pass at. And a drive into left. Young will go to the wall, and it's going to be over his head off the wall. Zobris on his way to the plate. It'll be a double for Evan Longoria, and the Rays tie it. Evan Longoria on a 2 1 pitch lines a double in the left. Well, you just figure Chen is sick of the walk, and he's behind Longoria. He's going to come with a strike. Evan anticipating the same thing, and look at this center cut. You're lucky if you're way in Chen that this did not find its way into the stands. Close. See the jump by Delman Young. Ball ends up behind him. The race tie it. And that's going to be it for Chen. Buck Showalter to make the change here after four and two thirds. Back in a moment. Game three tomorrow night, and Drew Smiley, the lefty, coming off that great pitching performance, will be on the mound, and we'll hear from Drew on Rays Live, the pregame show presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. It'll be another Web Wednesday, and our coverage begins at 6:30. Well, the Rays have tied it here in the fifth inning. And right hander Brad Brock now in the game. He's on to face Will Myers. He starts Will with a slider and picks up a strike. Brad Brock has done some pretty good work coming out of this Baltimore Oriole bullpen. Per perfect 4 0 record. ERA just over two and a half and 49 and two thirds innings. Get back with another slider, 0 2. Brock with a good arm. Got a fastball and a split, but that slider as well. And we've seen how effective he can be against Will Myers with that on the first two pitches. And, and you would figure to maybe not. Go with the same pitch. I mean, why not? But go to the definitely down to the same area. You've got Will Myers down here, not one and two. And you better believe that's where Brock is going to go, and he gives you a little bit of deception on top of those three offerings. Kind of stepping towards the Rays dugout, little crossfire. Myers fouls it back. You got a fastball there, one and two. Yeah, and, and you know what? When you go with three straight off speed, sometimes that, that's tough for some guys to do. 
just not comfortable going off speed after off speed. So you come back with that fastball up and away to get your arm speed back up. Okay, he fouls it off. Guess what? Here I come back with the slider. I change arm level. I go back to slider right here. If I execute it, the inning's over. And this time, Myers lays off. The pitch winds, winds up out of the zone, down and away. Here it comes again. Well, he started him with it. He'll try to finish him with it. And there's a take. Isn't that Three funny? Sometimes you watch these pitchers and they'll go out and jump ahead of a guy 0 and 2 on two quality pitches. And then they want to get nastier. I got to make my slider nastier. I got to be better with the fastball. And all of a sudden they pitch themselves right to a full count situation. And any of one of those first two sliders would have been just fine. And he got him. Back with it. So Myers out on strikes. First strikeout for Baltimore pitching. Rays get the tying run home on the double by Longoria. Pitched four innings tonight, and that's going to be it for the Rays right hander in the dugout right now. Talking with Tom Foley. Four innings for Cobb, 92 pitches, three hits, two runs, and he's out of this game. Uh, it, and it was a it was a battle for Alex. All four of those innings, Baltimore, as that game went on, made him work so hard for each out. Kind of surprised that he's not back out there for the fifth, but. Obviously, Joe Madden had seen enough. Well, he had been on such a great run since the end of June. Yeah, left up to him. He'd be right back out there. Yeah, he's one of those guys. You you literally you'd have to go out there and drag him off the field. I mean, he's he's never going to. Come out of the game of his own doing, and so you know that he's not happy right now. Talking to Jim Hickey. Kirby Yates takes over. He was in the game last night for an inning, gave up a couple of hits, including a run, touch for a home run by Chris Davis in last night's game, and he'll face the top of the order here in the fifth, Nick Marcakis. The pitch is high, one ball and no strikes. It's 
So both starting pitchers out of here. There's a strike. Grant Balfour loosening in the Rays bullpen. Game tied 2 2, so it'll be in the hands of the two bullpens from here on out. Well, and both bullpens are good bullpens, but they're going to be extended. I mean, the, you know, usually you're turning it over seventh, eighth inning, okay. But here, in the bottom of the fifth, the Rays go to their bullpen. Baltimore has already been utilized. Well, the Rays used four pitchers last night. They got four innings plus from Oda Rizzi. So essentially, in the first two games of this four game series, they received four innings from their two starters, which is unusual for the Rays. Very, and it puts that strain on the bullpen. It's going to be what you would think a hotly contested. Four game series. No off day on the horizon. Arcakis fouls it. Arcakis singled in the first. Called out on strikes in the third. Two on him in the fifth inning. Pierce next, and then Jones. Guide to center, not overly deep. One away as Desmond Jennings puts it away. Steve Pierce to face Yates. Pierce 0 for 2. The Rays again put the shift on for him. It's grounded out to short and has popped out to short. You can see the three lined up over there on the left side. Big spot here for Yates, top of this Baltimore lineup. Breaking ball in for a strike. It'll be interesting to see from here on out the matchups that, that Joe goes with because he's going to have to really mix and match in cover in this ball game. Strike two. Uh, he's got Grant Balfour out there throwing softly. Fair ball, deep back of third, long throw. Loney cannot come up with this one. Pierce is aboard. Rodriguez, by the time he got to that ball, behind the bag knew he's going to have to come up with a strong, hurried throw. Yeah, you see the chop, and Sean plays it back and then tries to field and throw all in one motion. And I don't know, even if that ball is scooped by Loney, if it's there in time. Pierce is hustling. And the way that Loney, that he didn't get that ball out in front, kind of almost was behind him. By the time he hit that glove, Pierce, his foot had hit the bag. So that'll be the fourth hit of the ball game for Baltimore. Adam Jones set to be the hitter. America's New Sports Network is the place to turn for every home run, every goal, and every game with America's pregame show on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Tune in 
to America's pregame show weeknights at 6 p.m. Eastern time only on Fox Sports 1. Adam Jones with a little pop to short. It's handled by Escobar. Two outs. A big out there of Jones, and now the Major League's leading home run hitter, Nelson Cruz, who opened the fourth with a base hit and scored. Bats again in the fifth inning. Strikes starting him with a breaking pitch again. And a strike at the knees. Gates has been with the Rays since early June, made his major league debut against Seattle on June the 7th. It's one and two. For ball two, two and two. Kirby Yates taking that breaking ball well off the plate, and Nelson Cruz, even so, started out there towards it. That's how eager this lineup is to swing the bat. Full count. Yeah, Kirby was not sold on that. that. That's a good idea there by the veteran Ryan Hannigan. When you see a slider that far off the plate and Nelson Cruz falling across the plate, almost swinging at it, that's the time to come in. He is selling out for the outer half, and Hannigan set up in there for the fastball, and Kirby just yanked it down middle. Never got to its spot. But that was a good idea by Hannigan to try to take advantage of Nelson Cruz diving out over the plate. Stepping out of the box. Pierce is at first now. Two outs and a full count. So Pierce will get a running start. And a cut and a miss. Cruz strikes out. So a one out infield hit. They leave him aboard. We go to the sixth. Tied 2 2.
and the Rays open the scoring in the first. Evan Longoria's base hit into right. Got Ben Zobris. The Rays had a number of threats early. But in the bottom of the fourth, Caleb Joseph singled home. Nelson Cruz and Delvin Young. That gave Baltimore the lead until the fifth. But Evan Longoria's two out double to left scored Ben Zobris from first base. That tied the game. So it's 2 2 moving into the sixth inning. The Rays now facing the former San Diego Padre, Brad Brock. Here's Janelle Escobar. Pitch is low. One ball, no strikes. Got Escobar chasing the slider. Ground ball right to scope at second. One away. And that was one of the strangest swings, almost like Yanel was not sure. If that ball was where it was, he started to look like he was going to go after that pitch aggressively and then just kind of pushed it out to the second baseman. Yeah, I noticed the same thing. It's almost as if he guided it right to scope. Yeah, well, you, <laughs> just that's just right in line with the rest of this game. It's a goofy ball game here. It does have that feel, doesn't it? James Loney. Viewing that one foul the other way for a strike. Well, you're into the bullpens. The starters had to work extremely hard, came out early. You're tied up. A couple of runners thrown out at the plate for the Rays. Their cob worked just four innings, finished the fourth, making 33 pitches in that inning. Yates worked the fifth. Chen worked four and two thirds, and Brock came on to strike out Myers to end the fifth with Longoria on second base. Two and one. Puts Loney ahead, three balls and a strike. Two one change up and he laid off as it wound up low and outside. That's Hannigan on deck. And a nice take on the pitch away with a fastball. Loney draws the walk and the Rays get a base runner with one out for Ryan Hannigan. And again, just reinstated from the disabled list. And again, all for one. He walked his last time, reached on a fielder's choice, and the second. That's a strike. Cut at the fastball and a foul ball back. Trying to tie Ryan Hannigan up. You know, Brad Brock would like nothing more than a you know, ground ball here. And you would think the way, the way his delivery is, the movement on his pitches, that he'd be more of a ground ball than he is. That guy than he is. About a 50 50 breakout. With him, it's all about deception. Liner over the head of the shortstop. Hardy and into left, and the Rays put two men on with one out. The Hannigan with his first hit of the night. First and second. 
Well, this is why being able to command your pitches is so important. Two strikes, he's got Hannigan in trouble. Look, he wants it away. That ball's running back in, and Hannigan is right on it. Get it to your spot and execute. You're probably going to get him out. If you don't, that's what happens. Well, Matt Joyce will pinch hit for Sean Rodriguez. So the left handed bat of Matt Joyce up against Brock here in the sixth inning. Well, here's where some of that versatility on the Rays will pay off as well. With Joyce pinch hitting for Sean Rodriguez. Strike one. Well, having a guy like Zobrist who can play all over the place really helps. One and one the count. I foul. It's going to be out of play down the opposite side. Joyce in this pinch hitting roll. 281 against right handed pitching. But down in the count. Close. Shot the corner. There's the 2 2. Third going and a pitch fouled away by Joyce reaching out there. Fouling that pitch away and in the process protecting Loney. Yeah, how about that? You don't expect James Loney to be running here. 2-2 two -two count. The Rays getting aggressive here and you take a look at Brock taking a peek back and boy, good jump by Loney. And to take advantage of Chris Davis so far off third base. And there's ball three. So the count is full to Matt Joyce, who's four of 18 as a pinch hitter this year. It's Tommy Hunter, hard throwing right hander, getting loose in the bullpen for Baltimore. And ball four is outside. The bases are going to be loaded. Fastball missed away. Joyce draws the walk and we'll get around to the top of the order. Bases loaded, one out for Desmond Jennings. Well, this is the one thing that you cannot have. Close games, your bullpen. If they want to swing the bats and beat you that way, you can live with that. What you can't live with are the walks. Getting ahead and then walking, guys. And Brock, those last two pitches wasn't even close. Dave Wallace, the pitching coach out there. Learn about healthy eating with the Matt Moore plate and cup set. Divided plate shows youngsters what to eat during a meal presented by Fresh for Florida Kids and will be given to kids 14 and under while supplies last. When the Rays take on the Red Sox Sunday, August 31st, call 888 Fan Rays or visit RaysBaseball.com. Great opportunity for the Rays in this tie game. Here in the sixth, with Desmond Jennings facing Brad Brock. Brock throws a fastball by him, strike one. You know, he has that ability every now and then to that fastball. We've seen one at 95, that at 94. Desmond Jennings just thinking about getting the barrel to the baseball. A couple of hits already. A chance to give the Rays the lead.
the take on a pitch away. One ball, one strike. Brock wanted that pitch and probably should have had it. And the fastball is fouled back. One and two. I'll tell you what, we, we talked about how hard Chen had to work tonight, how hard Alex Cobb had to work tonight. You, you've got to work pretty hard for a strike, too. Pat Hoberg, his strike zone, thin. It is thin. It, it, it's led to these inflated pitch counts. A little tapper, third base side, barehanded pickup, throw to the plate. Wow. Out there, and what a play by Chris Davis to barehand it, get the throw away to Joseph. And the Rays. Lose another man at the plate. This one on a force play. That's three. The play by Davis. How about the play by Joseph on the other end? Davis going around and throwing it right up the line, and Joseph right over the leg of Loney with the scoop. I mean, come on with the glove work there by the Baltimore catcher. Davis sets himself up nicely. This is what Caleb Joseph is looking at. They, I'm telling you, you got a screen coming in there, and that scoop to the glove side. What a play all around. Yeah, boy, what a great shot that was of Loney coming down the line. And a scoop by Joseph. Now here's Zobers. One strike to count on him. Well, the Rays have been good for 270 feet. The last 90s kill him. Lost three runners at the plate. Zobris lifts a fly ball into left. Young is there to catch it. Rays load the bases. Leave them that way. Do not score. And an outstanding play by Chris Davis and Caleb Joseph prevents the lead run from scoring. the bottom of the sixth inning T-Mobile game changer boy this has been a frustrating evening for the Rays well they have two runs but three times they have lost runners at home plate on those occasions they can get them to third base but they just can't get him home. No, and, and some tremendous throws and good glove work by Caleb Joseph, especially here. Those last two throws, actually all three of them. But reaching, scooping, the throw by Adam Jones, frustrating. 
Logan Forsythe goes over to play third. Ben Zobris now at second. Matt Joyce stays on to play left field. And Grant Balfour is the new pitcher for the Rays. Yates worked an inning in relief of Cobb. 52nd appearance for Balfour. Balfour had a nice outing up in Toronto. See if he can continue that run. He's going to need to. This is Delman Young, and the first pitch is a fastball in there for a strike. Cobb gave up two runs, four innings, made 92 pitches. One and two to Delman. Balls, two strikes. Grant pitched an inning in two thirds in that outing in Toronto, gave up one hit, no runs. I pop fly, short center for Jennings. One away in the sixth. Well, you know what? If you can get Grant Balfour throwing the ball like that, you can expect some success to follow. Aggressive, stay in the zone. You know what's killed Grant this year is not only the walks. The walks, they're bad enough, but it's also indicative of not attacking the zone. So now you find yourself not only walking that many guys, but you're probably behind a lot too, and those lead to big hits, and, and that's what's plagued them all year. Strike to Hardy. Well, he's always pitched off his fastball, and early he didn't have the velocity that he's had in the past, and so I think we started to see a lot more of the breaking stuff. Yeah, and you nibble with the fastball, and then a lot more of the breaking stuff. It's not the way that you have ever pitched in your career, and he's out of his comfort zone, and that led to a lot of bad counts, hits, walks, lack, you know. You're not happy with where your fastball is velocity wise and you're not getting results confidence starts to plummet. So it's been a struggle to try to build that back up. Jump stairs. One and two. Velocity seems in good order tonight. Yeah. Two and two. Chris Davis on deck. Ground ball headed up the middle. There's a base hit by Hardy. Came on the fastball. Well, Hardy just two strikes using the middle of the field. Ball's down and away, not in a bad spot. Nice job by Hardy to find some room to work with up the middle. Yeah, that could be very frustrating, especially if you've had the kind of year Balfour's had. You make a pretty good pitch, and the guy still gets a base hit. I think he said that pretty much to the press. You know, when I make a good pitch, they find a way to to drop it in. Make a bad pitch, I pay for it even more so. Well, there's an example of it right there. Yep. The base hit by Hardy. You get it pretty much where you want it. And he really could not have driven that fastball to 
a better spot. That ball was down around the knees on the outside corner. What are you going to do? Top of that first hit he's ever given up to Hardy, who was 0 for 5 against him coming into that at bat. Away from Chris Davis, he's behind him. 2 and 0. A strike two and one. Ground ball down to first. Loney, second base one, back to Balfour behind him. Bounding off the railing. So they get Hardy on the force down at second, but the throw back to first was behind Balfour. You know, and, and that's a tough throw to make to a pitcher moving towards the bag. That's why you got to do what Loney does. Just field it and throw it to the bag. Don't try to lead him. Don't try to throw it to him. Just throw it to the bag with the idea that he's going to get there. This one just kind of sails on him, and you see Balfour does get to the bag. The throw is behind the bag. And fortunately for the Rays, that ball did not bound into the little camera well right there, and you keep Davis at first base. And you just got to take that throw and, and fire it right to the bag. It's on the pitcher if he's not there. There's Caleb Joseph, the catcher. Base hit in the left. Joyce in to make the pickup, and down the second goes Davis. Two men on with two men out. And Jonathan Scope, the second baseman, will be up here. Go for 0 for 2 tonight and 0 for 2 in his career against Grant Balfour. A nice stop by Hannigan. One and two. Little cross up. Runner on second base now all of a sudden. Hannigan expecting something different. That's right. The way that he receives this. Oh. Bottom of the six, two men on with two men out. Line drive, base hit into left. Joyce with the pickup. Davis heads to the plate. He will score without a play. And it's three to two. Davis scores. Joseph goes to third on Scope's base hit. Well, two two out hits. You see Grant Balfour right there splitting the fingers. A little bit different pitch for him. That right there almost acting like a straight changeup, but Scope is able to lengthen that swing and rocket that ball out to left field. And score Chris Davis with the go ahead run. Not seen that pitch from Grant before. Now, Nick Markakis. This pitch is a strike to Markakis.
Orioles with three runs, seven hits. High fly ball to right. Myers turning around, going back, not yet to the track. Calls it in. So the Orioles are done in the sixth, but they pick up the go ahead run. 3 2 Baltimore. Of the seventh inning from Baltimore, Fox Sports Supports is proud to support Stand Up to Cancer's fourth annual star studded telecast. Catch the fundraiser featuring music performances and stars from film, TV, and sports in a momentous and inspiring stand against cancer September 5th at 8 Eastern on Fox Sports 2. Tommy Hunter is going to be the new pitcher for the Orioles. He makes his 45th appearance entering the game here in the 7 2 and 2 with a 361 earned run average. The third pitcher, so Brad Brock, who worked an inning and a third, becomes the pitcher of record for Baltimore. Brad Balfour, the third race pitcher of the night, currently the pitcher of record for the Rays. And Hunter will face Logan Forsythe. Now the Rays third baseman. Longoria next and then Myers. Little tapper headed to short. Hardy up with it and a quick throw to first. Gets Forsythe. One away. Well, there's Miller, the big lefty with the big wingspan, getting ready in the bullpen. I didn't recognize him. Sands the uh, the beard, the goatee. Different team, different look. Evan Longoria. The pitch is down. One ball, no strikes. Well, this is the way that the Baltimore Orioles like things to be set up late in the game. They could go to that bullpen. To shut down guys towards the end and try to ride it out that way. So the Rays lineup has the work cut out for them. Yeah, they'll see a lot of looks from here on out. Tommy Hunter, power righty, saw the breaking ball there. Andrew Miller, long, lanky lefty. You got Zach Britton, you got Darren O'Day. Gloria reaching for that one, a breaking pitch. It's one and two. Well, even when you start to think about their middle relief with Brad Brock, he throws strikes. He's nasty. Mm -hmm. Brian Mattis, who's been so good with inherited runners, a lot of options. Upstairs, two and two. No, that's why their current team ERA, as we discussed earlier, fifth best in the league, but it's the best they've had around here in a long time. Yeah. 
Gregoria strikes out. Two up, two down. If their TBRA holds up, it's 360 coming into this game tonight. And if that holds up for the full season, it'll be the best they've had since 1979. That's, I, I mean, think about that. That's, that's tough. They've had a lot of pitching they over do. that period of time. Yeah. When you think about those days and they had Mike Lucina, Scott Erickson. This was scooped by yeah. Davis. Throw to first just in time to get Will Myers. And the Rays on two ground balls and a strikeout sandwich in between. Quickly disposed of in the top of the seventh by Hunter. 3-2 Baltimore. Balfour back to the mound to work the bottom of the seventh inning. As promised earlier, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag SunSportsFanPhoto for a chance to be shown at an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. First pitch in the bottom of the seventh, Steve Pierce looks at a strike. Pierce, Jones, and Cruz do up. Strike 0 2. Peralta up in the Rays bullpen. Up and in. 1 and 2. Pierce losing his helmet. Batting in the top of the seventh inning in Detroit, the Tigers have a four to one lead. Marcelo is still in there in the seventh inning. For Detroit. Now it's 2 2 on Pierce. Tigers started the night. Trailing Kansas City in the central by a game and a half. The Red Sox and the Blue Jays had an interesting game again for Toronto. They were down, the Blue Jays down four to three. They scored a run in the seventh. 
tied 4 4 in the top of the eighth. 3 2 now the count to Pierce. Nice catch, Andrew. Kansas City at home. And the Twins have scored a run in the seventh inning to take a 1 0 lead over the Royals. Pierce fouls it, forcing another 3 2 pitch from Balfour. In the seventh inning. Oh, and those are frustrating too because it was after Graham was able to jump out in front and ends up losing them, overthrew a couple of pitches, and then missed down in a full count. Fox Tracks liked it. Well, the problem is, as you pointed out, the rookie umpire Pat Hol Holberg is making these pitchers throw strikes and a little more. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, and if you're not consistently in the areas you want to be, it's going to be tough to get those calls as well. No question about that. Adam Jones lines it into the stands. Foul strike one. I tell you the other. The other thing that we've seen as this game has moved on, Fox Tracks has expanded their zone. I think they want to get out of here. <laughs> Myron's done. Tap it out. <laughs> One strike count. One one the count now to Jones. Cobb gave up two runs in four innings. Yates one scoreless inning. Balfour surrendered third run in the sixth. Working with a man on in the seventh. Nobody out. A 1 1 count on Adam Jones. He pops him up. Will it stay playable? Han Hannigan back, but he runs out of room, and that's well fouled back over the screen. 1 and 2. Jones hit this tonight. This is the only hitter in the lineup not to reach base for the Orioles one way or another. And it's two and two now. Rays opened with a run in the first. Baltimore two runs in the fourth. The Rays tied it with a run in the fifth. Baltimore grabbing the lead with a run in the sixth inning. Jones out of the box. He sets himself in there. Pitches down, so the count is full. Jones out of the box again and re velcros his batting gloves. You know, as much as pitchers take time between pitches, it's hitters stepping out that also consumes a tremendous amount of time. Yep, it, it definitely is a combination of the two. 
ground ball that's headed for the hole. Pierce was running. He's going to go to third. It will be first and third with nobody out. Pierce took off on the 3 2 pitch. Jones is aboard for the first time. Now you, you, you've got faith that Adam Jones is going to be able to put this ball in play. And he rolls it over in the hole. It gets by Escobar, and Pierce just continues on to third. A tough turn of events here for the Rays. Joe Madden out of the dugout with an eye toward the bullpen. We'll be back. Change. Grant Balfour out after one inning plus two hitters in the seventh. And Joel Peralta makes his 57th appearance. He finds himself in a tough spot here, too. Nobody out. Runners on the corners. You're already down a run. You can't really let Baltimore expand too much more and be tough enough as it is. First and third here Pierce who had walked went to third he was breaking on this pitch and you can see he was in between will there be a play at third or maybe not and so he was thinking about sliding and then so now you can stay up well he had a difficult time staying up well and, and did you see Bobby Dickerson when he sh came into the, the picture the, the hands they weren't all the way up as a, on a stop here they were just kind of out there and that's kind of how the slide was kind of out there. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how to describe it. Just don't get hurt. Yeah, he's trying to imitate his third base coach and stumbled his way into third. This is how you want me to slide? <laughs> now Nelson Cruz, Peralta. Ball, ball back, strike one. Deficit now for the Rays. You know what? Between second and third, we had a really close call there on what could have been interference with Yanel Escobar and Adam Jones trying to avoid each other as Jones was coming around second base. That was a hanging breaking ball right here. Nelson Cruz gets down and through that. Desmond Jennings going as hard as he can, just cannot get there. Here's 
Delman Young. Just down 1-0. Well, watch here. Adam Jones, Yanel Escobar. Close. You can see the, the Baltimore dugout pointing out there as if maybe they thought they had something. Ground ball third. Grabbed there by Forsyth. Throw to first in time. One gone here in the seventh. Now this ball gets to Forsyth right away. Look him back, turn, and make a strong and accurate throw. Field stays in with JJ Hardy up there. There's a strike to Hardy. Hardy's been on twice, including a single his last time. He walked back in the second. And officially one for two. Ground ball third base again. For sight there and a wide throw, but Loney keeping his foot on the bag made a fine play on the other end. First two games of the series, James Loney has been used to this position. Forsyth a little bit wide on the throw. He's got to be like, come on. Well, two outs, men at second and third. Chris Davis is due up. Jim Hickey out to have a full scale conference with Peralta. Caleb Joseph, the right handed bat, is due next. And Davis, regardless of the fact that he came into the game hitting 190, he is very, very dangerous. Davis. Four for 13 with a home run off Peralta. Cut the miss way out in front, strike one. Run in the sixth, the run in the seventh. The Orioles have taken a four to two lead. Base set, no, it's foul. Trying to take it against the ship. That went scary up the line, but enough slice that it's foul. I'll tell you what, if the Rays somehow find their way out of this hitting, just giving up one run, what a boost to that dugout. I mean, look like the Orioles about ready to land the knockout punch. And they've almost wiggled their way out of this. Two strikes the count to Davis. Up out of the zone. One and two. The inning started on a walk. Then the base hit, the run is scored. Two men in scoring position.
Ground ball right side. Escobar on the right side of the infield with the pickup. So they hold them to just a run. 4-2 Baltimore. Southern Chevy Dealers game summary finds the Rays coming into bat in the eighth inning. Could have got of that spot in the bottom of the seventh, limiting the Orioles to a run. So the Rays are down four to two. Evan Longoria driving in both runs for the Rays tonight. Caleb Joseph, the Baltimore catcher, driving in a couple runs in the fourth. They added runs in the sixth and seventh. David Lowe's in the game here to play left in the eighth. And you know Escobar will face the lanky left-hander Andrew Miller. Andrew Miller, good numbers all around, has done a nice job since coming over to Baltimore. The strikeout numbers, 81 and 50 and two-thirds. But regardless of that, the Rays getting out of that inning has got to give you some hope here. Oh. Well, Escobar takes the pitch for a strike. It looked like it was going to be a couple of innings of you and I trying to fill and make it seem somewhat interesting, but now it is on its own merits. <laughs> big cut the miss by Escobar. He's trying to get one of those runs back with that big cut. Miller, the fourth pitcher utilized by Buck Showalter. Tonight. It's fouled out of play. Loney next and then Hannigan. Chin started. Brock came on for an inning and a third. He is the pitcher of record for Baltimore. Hunter for an inning, and now Miller. Get off of me. <laughs> That's what that pitch was all about. You know, Escobar is like out of my personal space. Fouled that down that first base line off his thumb. And Miller, lanky lefty, good fastball, sharp breaking ball. We saw the strikeout numbers. 
battle here. Mm -hmm. oh, pitch breaking down and in. Escobar, nothing out of three. Leading off the eighth. Again with a bouncer foul. Same thing on a slider. Two balls, two strikes. Escobar checking on the count right there. It's two and two right now. Eight pitches in. Here's the ninth one. Now it's a full count. It's a deep and varied bullpen here in Baltimore. Escobar strikes out a long at bat, but a slider got him. 3 2 slider. One away. No miss tomorrow's Wednesday night showdown presented by Mazda. The Rays again take on the Orioles here from Baltimore at 6 30 on Sun Sports, and it will be Drew Smiley off his great outing Friday. In Toronto against the Blue Jays. Yeah, it'll be fun to watch and see if he can uh, back that one up. That's going to be tough to duplicate. That outing was tremendous. One and all the count on James Loney. Kevin Gaussman will do the pitching for Baltimore tomorrow. Only ahead in the count, two and nothing. How about those numbers for Loney against Miller? Four out of nine against this lefty with a home run. Good cut on a fastball, two and one. Three balls and a strike. Uh, you know what? All you're looking to do is get the tying run to the plate. Give yourself a chance here late. Andrew Miller has missed wildly with three of the four pitches in this at bat. Walker, a base hit, will do what the Rays need. And there's a liner in the right. That's going to stay up. And Marcakis makes the catch. I mean, it has been one of those nights all the way around. You lose three men at the plate. You finally get a nice count here. Loney on Miller. He's had success against him, and he rifles one out there. You expect it to be a base hit. And watch this thing just hang, hang, hang. Nice play by Marcakis. Yeah, when he hit that ball, you had ideas of. Loney being aboard with Hannigan, the potential tying run at the plate. Here he is batting with the bases empty in two outs. Hannigan lined a single in the left in the sixth. One to know the count. One. And one. Darren O'Day loosening in the bullpen now for Baltimore. Ground ball shortstop. Hardy's throw to first. The Rays are down one, two, three. Bottom of the eighth coming for two Baltimore.
Rays in the bottom of the eighth inning coming up on Rays Live, the post game, all presented by Checkers. We'll anchor the coverage here from Baltimore. Take a look at all the plays at the plate. The Rays have lost three runners at the plate tonight. We'll have Joe Madden's press conference and, of course, Todd Callis with interviews from the clubhouse. All part of our continuing coverage here of Rays baseball as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Peralta trying to hold the Orioles and give the Rays one last shot in the ninth. Well, he did a nice job of getting out of trouble in the eighth. Coming into a tough spot, gave up that one big hit, led to a run, but Toughened up from there. It's Caleb Joseph. Joseph. Two of three tonight had a big hit in the fourth inning with two outs. He singled. And that chased home Cruz and Young. Giving Baltimore a two to one lead. It's a high fly ball into center. Jennings makes the catch one away. That is Zach Britton. Tough left hander loosening in the bullpen. There's Jonathan Scope. He singled in a run in the sixth inning. That broke a 2 2 tie. It's the pitch down. One and one. Rays in the ninth inning. You'd have Joyce, Jennings, and Zobrist out. Two and one. Continue to lead Kansas City. Bottom of the eighth in Kansas City. It's one nothing. And the Tigers have a five to two lead on the Yankees in Detroit. That game's now in the bottom of the eighth. Piece of it foul by Scope. The count is still two and two. And the Blue Jays batting in the bottom of the ninth tied with the Red Sox 4 4. This game has progressed at a leisurely pace tonight. It's popped up foul. Side makes the catch to retire scope. Two gone. You've had a combination of things tonight. First of all, both starting pitchers were not sharp. They had to battle. The opposing offenses didn't make it easy on them. Pat Holberg has had one of the smaller strike zones we've seen in a while. And he has been, well, he's been, I'll to give him this, he's been very consistent with how he has called it. And you start to combine all of that high pitch counts early. Deliberate guys coming out of the bullpen and 
There you go. There are only six runs scored tonight. And what is a right now pushing three hours and 30 minutes. Yeah. Not good. Kaker steps back in. Especially when you're on the losing end right now. Mm -hmm. Not good. That would foul came in on him. And it's nothing in two. Two outs here in the eighth. The runs for the Rays driven in by Longoria. Joseph drove in two for Baltimore. Scope one. Nelson Cruz one. Diving to his right to retire the side. Hot shot off the bat of Marquecas. Loney. Step for the dive. Make the catch. We go to the ninth. Rays need two to keep it going. Pathetic. The Rays need some offense here. They scored a run in the first, a run in the fifth, and they're going to need at least that many in the ninth to keep it going. Ryan Flaherty comes on to play third base now for Baltimore, and the new pitcher is Zach Britton, and he can be very, very tough. 58th game, 27 out of 30 in saves, ERA just over two. Not a big strikeout guy, but look at the opponent's average 178. And he does that mainly with a devastating sinker from a lefty. He'll get it up there 93, 95 miles an hour, sometimes even harder than that, and get tremendous sink on it. Very rare to see that. One of the best moving fastballs in the game. Brandon Geyer will pinch hit for Joyce to start the ninth here against this tough lefty. Jennings next, then Zobrist. Pitch is a strike. Britain worked a 1 2 3 ninth inning last night. He got Longoria, Loney, and Myers. One and one. Geyer is two for five with a double and a home run. 
of Zach Britton. Ground ball back a second. Scope shaded that way and he makes the play. Well, the defense set up helped that time for Baltimore. We've seen some guys be able to squeeze them through every now and then, but not there. Geyer going right back up the middle, which is what you would expect. A good sinker down and away hard. Use the middle of the field. Right to scope. Blue Jays in an extra inning game again. They're 4 4 at the end of nine. Boston hitting in the 10th. It's the Canadian exchange rate. It must be. Nine American, 10 11 Canadian. Ball one to Jennings. Strike. Britt was in last night's game. It had been almost a week since his last outing. Needed the work. And he's ahead of Jennings, one and two. Britain picked up his last save on the 20th against the White Sox so six days ago. Two balls, two strikes. In the mid 90s. Yeah, I tell you that that is you talk about a nasty pitch. He's got a good enough sinker when it's down and away from the righty, let alone when he wants to come in with it. One of the few borderline pitches in that area that we've seen go the pitcher's way. And here is Ben Zobris. Takes the first pitch for a strike. And he tapped the third. Flaherty makes the throw to first, and this one is over. One, two, three, go the Rays in the ninth. A 4 2 final, Baltimore back in a moment. <laughs> 